I'll show you a short introductory video. So this video, this wasn't done by me, so I didn't create it, but it was one of the students who created the video. And I would like to introduce you to the Labyrinth game. And my focus, which I had when we developed this game with the students, is how to create a learning experience. Not so much how do we have a long living open source project where uh, many people can tr contribute, but how to spark a lot of people into the project and maybe maybe it stops yeah and this uh, w what I got from this I would like to share with you so um, yeah what um, we can we can first have a look at the labyrinth and what it lo it looks like so then you may already see where are the places where one can contribute to this game so first we we open the labyrinth and we have characters we can choose and after we've chosen the character, we can we can walk around. So now I've chosen a little elephant, and I can walk through the labyrinth. And sometimes there pop up some notes about rooms I enter. And yeah, Minecraft. And there are some bugs too in the game. Like, oh, there's a, there's a house. Oh, for example, a, a wheel. <laughs> um, yeah. That it is. When and much more like you can earn badges for for doing some things for entering different levels or different places. Yeah, that is in short a labyrinth. And the vision for me is that we we have this game. It is customizable by, by the students. A lot of students can come in. There are low thresholds for contributing, and they are always welcome to do so. So we have an, a learning environment which is uh, welcoming to the other students. Um, how can we proceed further? We can uh, talk about um, where this happened. So, of course, there were a lot of students contributing, but how do I get access to these students? So there's this um, competition called Google Code In, and some of you who've been to the talk about empathy, they heard that, uh, that there's Google Code In. And this is a competition where students can sign up to, and they can uh, work on tasks. So tasks are like uh, small, yeah, small things they can do, like upload a picture to the website, show that you've learned Git, create a promotional video, and from this competition on, they can uh, uh, join any open source organization that signed up. It was 25 open source organizations, and, yeah, and contribute to the projects they have set up for Google Code. So. What what is it like if if you contribute to the game? Um, actually, I, I lost my notes. <laughs> I, I get, get my notes. I'll talk about this also. Like you can, if you if you see. Yeah, yeah. I would like some input, Kirsten, or for anyone, please. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. How did it work? How did the students get uh, the different tasks, and uh, what inspired them? So we um, we launched a lot of tasks, so students can come in. So these tasks, I, I can show some of them. They are, for example, um, they are all listed here on the web page. So students are allowed to edit their own tasks, and we can upload them afterwards to the to the Google Code Insight. And there's, for example, uh, the task how to add a character. And this is a, quite an easy task. Um, you have to remember, when you're a student, you've never used GitHub, you may need actually to get an email address to get into Google Code, and, and then you need to learn Git. And then if you're saying, OK, you need to contribute a lot of code before we can get your contribution, then those students uh, mostly will fail. So adding a character is one way of uh, reducing the load for a student. So um, they paint a, paint a character on the computer, maybe with paint, better with Inkscape, because it's an SVG game where you can zoom in and everything is clear. And then they have to edit one file of a JavaScript. And yeah, then we can merge. And they have their character into the game and can play with the character. And I think that's uh, an experience that keeps them with the game. There, there are even more tasks that the students can choose. For example, to add a level. So of course, we have those small tasks, like add a character. And there's add a level now, we can create many tiles, you can create a new whole landscape with uh, different places to go. And there are also other types of tasks. So these are coding tasks, but there are also tasks that, um, that change it, um, that change the whole experience of contributing. For example, please enable a new task. So, for example, their uh, students said, oh, cool, we can contribute to the game. We have added a character. We have added a new place where you can go. Um, but I would like to have some music. And actually, uh, there was somebody claimed this task and created an API for other students to uh, play music so that for them it is as easy to add music as to add a character. So they they. Uh, upload a file and then they edit a little bit of a JavaScript, just say, okay, I've got this music file and um, some copyright notice, and then this file is played. So we can actually have um, coding tasks and we, have can, we can get the feedback of the students to create even more tasks for other students and they enjoy creating an application programming interface totally new experience than just using it, making it usable for other students. And there's also a, another kind of task, which is um, yeah, cooperate, cooperation. And so the, the point of, of this task is that I want to show the students that you are able to do this on your own. So when another person creates a pull request to the game, for example, a character, and they don't know how to do that. Then they ask. And another student who is working on this task can come in and say, hey, let's do this together, work together on this, and they will not work on the main repository, but on the fork together. So they learn how to set up a project, to invite other people, and how to actually make pull requests to different repositories, not only the master branch of the, mas of the main repository. And uh, with this, we can create a, a more like a cooperative environment where the students help each other. So actually, I would like some more input, for example, from Kirsten. Hello, Kirsten. <laughs> so why is it so easy to contribute to your project apart from the pull requests, and how how did you come up with this? So uh, actually, uh, so much I didn't come so much up so much with uh, the the how easy it is. Uh, that's mostly the students, though. There's a lot of a lot of documentation. If you if you have a look, like we are about here, like uh, uh, don't know a small part of the game, and. Um, the students themselves, they had tasks for adding documentation, and they added a lot of documentation. First, the motivation and the vision, and then how to 
how to contribute, what makes a great contribution, and also tutorials if I want to do this task, how can I make it easy? And this way, yeah, they enabled, uh, they flattened, the, they reduced the threshold for new students to come in to contribute to the game. There's uh, also some learnings. So if anybody has a question, please always uh, raise your hand. Oh, yeah. Um, what's the purpose of the game? So, um, as I saw in the video, I think uh, you start on one tile that's visible and then you start running around and I, I imagine you're looking for stairs or are you looking to get out of the labyrinth? But what's, um, what's the, uh, is there an end goal or is it just exploration? Yeah, so, um, this so for each student, this, the purpose is somehow different. So they add their tile to this, and they want others to explore the tile and to see that and to have fun on this. So for example, there is uh, this living room tile over here, and there is a chocolate room somewhere else, and there was a task to create dependencies between tiles. So if you enter the chocolate room and you go back to the living room, the living room turns into chocolate. So it's <laughs> something where students can, uh, it's a discovery game. It's nothing where you can like say, okay, this is the goal, go to the next level. Of course, you can go to next levels, but uh, being in this one level and discovering it uh, while you program it and you see you can change it and be part of this game, that's, that's I think, the purpose of the students. And for me, it's uh, creating a learning experience where, uh, yeah, where they have fun doing it, but it's not like, um, like a jump and run game like Super Mario, where, where you need to achieve and you get points. Students uh, also say that like we have a move statistics, for example, so you could count w how much it takes to reach the next level. Um, but uh, that depends on the students. So I'm just the one who created like these, these ugly rooms and everything else was made by the students, uh, also the web design. Um, Yes, please. Yeah, hi. Uh, I might have missed that because I just walked in a few minutes late, but mm -hmm. um, can you um, probably repeat again um, what about the, the, the ages these students were, or like the background in general? Uh, if, if you um, already talked about it, um, I'm sorry, but uh, yeah. just to get, a, get no, no, another idea. Um, okay. Good, good question. So this is part of Google Coding, which is an online uh, uh, competition and the ages are I think between 13 and 18 and I'm I didn't ask what age they are and when they contributed I was just happy that they do I think uh, there are more contributors who are so people who stayed longer and contributed more are usually a little older than the, the younger ones but that's the age range from my uh, memory and, and what's their sort of average background or what's their motivation for doing this? Is this like a, an involuntary project or was it inside of some school project mm -hmm. or do they sort of volunteer? Are they motivated in, in the first place to come already or? So um, the competition uh, could be a motivation, um, but actually uh, the, the ones who win the competition are mostly motivated by contributing. So uh, when you, for example, when you fulfill three tasks, uh, not only on this game, but there are many, many more projects. There were like 16,000 tasks uh, fulfilled. And when you fulfill three, you get a t-shirt or something like that, or five, I don't know. The, but, yeah, and of course, learning. Mm -hmm. So, um Thank you uh, very much. It looks like a really uh, nice uh, initiative uh, to really motivate uh, people with uh, no experience or being so young, mm -hmm. as you mentioned. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, it looks really nice. And uh, like in general, open source projects uh, or many of them have this uh, problem that uh, people feel afraid to contribute because of lack of experience, so that's great. So my question is uh, on the contribution mode. Uh, I think you mentioned in one of the pages uh, per programming. So how does it work in a distributed environment? Because, uh, or maybe I'm assuming that people don't mm -hmm. know each other and are collocated, is that the case? So, uh, actually I don't know how the students interpret mm -hmm. pair programming. Might be that, uh, so, 
I think in some settings, it's a school setting where there are classes working on Google Codian, so there it applies very well. And in other cases, uh, I think it's for them to find out, and I don't know, but they could uh, create a, a live chat, for example, where somebody types and so, of course, for, for even lowering this threshold, we have, a, we have a chat there, so people can just log in and ask, hey, I have no clue, could you help me? And uh, so that we also get the students from before creating this pull request. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the pull request goes to the wrong place or they don't know how to click, so there's a chat to, to yeah, get them there. And for pair programming, they somehow they, they in the chat they wrote like, let's team up, let's do something, but I actually don't know how they did it. <laughs> okay, so no specific tools apart from the from the chat, no? Um, no. Okay. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. So are there any statistics on how mm. what you did maybe contributed uh, to students contributing and having an easier mm -hmm. time? Yeah, thank uh, you. Integrating themselves? So, yeah, statistics. Let's see. I think it's here. Um, that's, uh, the Labyrinth is uh, the third year of Google Coding where I participated. And here are some statistics. So, in the, the, first, uh, the first two years, we created an, another game which is called Flappy SVG. And uh, when you have a look at, at how it changes, so. Um, we had like six tasks and there we have 20 in the labyrinth. And we had, what is interesting to me, like 25% of those people creating a pull request, they, the pull requests were closed. And we went down to 14% and we did this by actually changing the process. So it was not like changing the architecture or anything of the code, it was like how we relate to other, to the students. That we are accepting, that we say, okay, you, you did this code, yeah, let's merge it in. And they're like excited. And then you can ask, oh, could you make a little change? I'll make an issue for that and they can claim a new task. So, um, yeah, just being open to the students and um, asking questions. And yeah, it's the process uh, that reduced uh, the, the waste, so to say. And um, then, of course, you can see that we went over to the Labyrinth game. So in there we changed the architecture. So in Flappy SVG, there is one single file for everything. And it's uh, an SVG file which you edit with Inkscape. So whenever somebody does a change, the metadata changes. And you have uh, merge conflicts. You, know, you cannot, like, if two people contribute in parallel, you most certainly get merge conflicts. So by changing the process, we, we get more merges. And here, the architecture, there was the idea, um, which game is, uh, can we create where students can create more characters, where every th single part of the game can be edited in many, many, many ways again. So you can add new floors again and again and again. You can create new music again, again and again, and new walls, uh, new levels. So as, um, it reduces uh, what we as mentors have to do, and the students can help each other more, and there's this documentation about what can be repeated in code to get the people into the project. It might not be that great from a, um, from an like from a point of view where you say, okay, I want to have it close and maintainable, but from a perspective of learning, it's great to have all these tasks which can be done again and again, so you can onboard developers with on already onboarded developers who can help each other and collaborate, yeah. And that's why we, I think, together with the tasks, we also like increased, um, increased the pull request merge um, per task, so. And yeah, and overall, uh, changing the ar architecture um, created a four times, uh, two times better, like uh, two times more um, contributions um, relating to this other game. And I uh, calculated out uh, how many students uh, were added to Google Code in. So that's inflation removed <laughs> two times by changing the architecture. my side about statistics. We can also look at how, how many, like, what's interesting to me is when I, when I look at, at the, how many um, 
how many contributors we have and how many forks we have. That means, oh yeah, time's over. So yeah, but okay. Um, how many forks we have? We can say people want to contribute, but how many who want to contribute actually can contribute? And uh, that's about well half here, or with the other for the Azure repository, it's about also about a half. And there are other projects which I worked on, where it's interesting. For example, here are eight forks and 13 contributors. So that's kind of a different process, or yeah, or like 900 forks and um, like 100 contributors. So having the the documentation and the the ease of getting into this uh, already changes how many forks and how many people actually get to contribute from from having this idea to contribute. Much. Is there time for questions? Should be so. Yeah, of course we we are doing this by questions, right? <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do that. So if if anybody has a question, of course I'm here and you can ask me. Thank you for listening.